everybody. We are here live with Ted Thomas, who is, of course, the authority on tax lien certificates and tax auctions. Hey, Ted, it's so great to see you. And um, how are things down there in Florida right now? Well, it's pretty hot. Let me tell you, though, September and October, that gets a little, uh, uh, October gets perfect, but September is still a little hot. In the 90s, a lot of humidity, but uh, it starts cooling down this month. So it's very nice okay. here in Florida. Happy to be here today. And how's everything over there in Cleveland? Doing pretty good. We just had a big uh, Labor Day weekend and we had the air show in in town and fairs happening. So, uh, you know, now summer's officially over and it's off. Uh, to me, this is always like the start of the work year, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I'm glad to have you here and I'm glad to have you on the call with us. And we're going to talk a lot about tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. And anybody that wants to ask a question, just go ahead and Type your question in and uh, Randy will get it and I'll go ahead and answer it. And uh, uh, yep. we're glad to have you here. Uh, we're going to try and uh, do this every Tuesday. You can have Tuesday lunch with Ted and uh, you can formulate your questions all week long, write them down and then send them in one at a time and we'll try to answer them. So uh, I hope all of you guys are well, wherever you might be. Uh, I've been in the tax lien and tax deed business for over 30 years and I've I've spent time in places like Cleveland, Ohio, buying at the tax defaulted auction. So I know the difference between the east side and the west side. And most people don't know that about Cleveland because the <laughs> east side is for all of us working folks. And the west side is where all the rich people live. So how about that? So Randy <laughs> lives on the rest west side. So we're going to talk about tax defaulted property. We're going to talk about tax liens. In Ohio, they do both. They have tax liens and they have tax deeds in that state, which is very unusual. Most places only sell one, either a tax lien or a tax deed. So here in Florida, most people know Florida as a state that sells tax lien certificates. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me shuffle around my desk, see if I can find one here. I have one here right on the desk. So a tax lien certificate is just a piece of paper like that. Okay. Now, oh, I better do it slow because the camera doesn't always get that. So. We're using a green screen today, so you might not see it, but that's just a piece of paper, and that's a tax lien certificate, and you'd love to own a bunch of those because in Florida, they pay up to 18%. In places like Illinois, they pay all the way up to 36%, so you can earn a lot of money if you buy a tax lien certificate. So, Randy, anytime you have a question that comes up on the screen, just go ahead and interrupt me because I can blab on about tax liens and deeds for another 20 years. <laughs> Well, that's fine, Ted. You know, that's what people are watching. But we do have a question, and this is from Eugene. Right. And Eugene is asking, can you review what a quiet title is? How about that? Starting out with a tough question. Okay, yeah, I can do that for you, Eugene. All right. Now, for those of you that are brand new, what happens with a tax defaulted property is they sell the property at auction. In other words, the government's already confiscated it. The people didn't pay their tax, so now the government wants to get rid of it. And so when the government sells a property, that's going to be a county, like it could be Cuyahoga County, it could be Orange County, Florida, it could be Los Angeles County. When they sell a property, they're going to sell a property, but they're not going to warranty the condition of the property, and they're not going to warranty any defects in the title. So if you want to have a clear title on the property, you have to get what's called a quiet title. Now, I can't give you a quiet title, and the county can't give you a quiet title. So what you have to do after you bought the property is you simply hire an attorney that does that kind of work. And you ask the attorney and say, this is the property number I bought, and I bought it on such and such a day, and here's my deed, and now I need you to call all the previous people and write to all the previous people that own this property and make sure that I have a clear title before I sell it. So it's a process that sounds a little complicated. Only attorneys can do it. And once they've done it, they'll give it to a judge. And then, you know, the judge has a big gavel. You know, you go, well, the gavel comes down and says, this is a clear title. Now you have a clear title. Now that's an oversimplification of what a clear title might be. So you kind of get the idea. So anybody can do that. How about that? First question out of the shoot is a tough one that most people uh, don't even know about. So I'm glad you asked that. So that was pretty well, good. There's no there's no tough questions for you, Ted. But uh, yeah, so. that's right. There's no <laughs> tough questions. And if there is, and I'll tell you, I don't know the answer, but I'll look it up for the next Tuesday. How is that? Is that a fair deal? 
Yeah. Well, we got another question here, and I tell you, this is coming from somebody named Wizard. So maybe this Wizard. is a tough question. I don't know. But right. the question is, do they bid down the interest in Florida and Illinois? Yes, they bid the interest down in Florida. They start at 18%, and then the next bid would be 17 and a half, then 17, 16 and a half. It can go all the way down to a quarter percent. So the states authorize the tax defaulted auction or the taxing sale. So when they authorize the sale, they say the maximum bid, the maximum the state will pay on that tax certificate is 18%. But let's say you want it and I want it. So I bid 18% and you say, I'll, uh, I want it for 17. The lowest bidder gets the tax lien. The lowest bidder gets the tax lien at a tax, tax lien sale auction. Okay, it's always an auction. It's never just a sale. They call it a sale, but it's really an auction. You gotta get the idea? That good? Yeah. It's so an very few people it's not a sale. Anyway. Yeah. So if you have another There's... one, you can jump in with that. If you don't, I have other things I can talk to you about. We've got a bunch of questions, but what is there is there something you want to share right now, Ted? Uh, no, I was just gonna say um, half of the states sell tax lien certificates, the other half of the states are gonna sell tax defaulted property. So one one state's gonna sell a piece of paper like I'm holding up. The other one's actually going to sell you the property. So when you get the piece of paper, you earn money on that certificate. You could earn 16, 18, 24% in Iowa, 36% in Illinois, that kind of thing. The other state, they're not so benevolent. What they do, for example, Cleveland, Ohio, if your property went to auction or anybody's property goes to the government, the local government, Cuyahoga County, will confiscate the property and then they resell it to the public. All right, so that's pretty severe. When they confiscate the property, that means you forfeited your property because you didn't pay the tax. So there you go. Okay. Well, hey, we got a uh, got a question here from Roger. Are you ready for this one, Ted? Sure. I hope. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to shoot away. Do you Fire need a away. permit? <laughs> do you need a permit to attend an auction, or do you need to register? You know, can anyone oh, just show up to on. an auction? Okay. See, so you're putting me on. Okay, I get it. All right. Folks, anybody can go to a tax auction. Anybody that wants to go can go. The only thing that you have to remember when you go to a tax auction is if you bid, you must have money. You can't go to an auction yeah. and start bidding and not have money. So you can't say, oh, my bid is so-and-so, and then expect to go up there and say to the guy, well, now I'm going to get out and get a bank loan. That's not going to happen. You, When you bid, you're going to get a bidder's number. I don't have one of those, but you'll hold up a bidder's number like this and say one, two, three on it or something. So you're holding it up and you're bidding. And when they say one, two, three, the guy with the with a crazy shirt on, come up here, you just bought a property, then you have to have money. So you don't want to go to an auction without money. But anybody can attend an auction. There's 5,000 auctions on tax defaulted property every single year. And 90% of the people don't even know they have these auctions. 5,000 of those auctions nationwide. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Hey, Ted. Hey, Ted. I got to tell you, you, got another great question that's that's really appropriate for the one you just answered. And this comes from Stacy. And she's wondering, can I change my mind after I win a bid? Whew. If you're the winner, <laughs> um, you better not have changed your mind. If you're the winner, you better drop out and, and say something. Because when you uh, bid, that assumes that you have money. So they have rules at the auction now. I'm not gonna read a, a whole bunch of rules to people, but I can assure you every auction is conducted by um, uh, an official government agency. For example, uh, let's take a, a county in, in any any county in the United States, there's 3,000 of them. So let's go to Orange County, which would be uh, Florida or Orange County, California. When they start that auction, there'll be a list of properties. Anybody can bid and when you raise your hand, or you raise your bidder's number, whatever you bid, that's an official action on your part. And if you if you didn't have the money, you better say, well, I don't have any money because you're going to get to the front and you don't have money. And if they want to, they can have the sheriff take you out of the auction and other, uh, escort you from the, from the building because they're not going to allow people. This is a very serious matter. You're actually selling property. Now, we're just, we're just talking on YouTube. You know, this is a piece of cake. When you go to an auction, this is an official government auction and you have to act accordingly. And so if you bid and you don't have money, they can they can remove you from the auction and never let you return. And it's part of the auction rules. So really, 
You shouldn't go to the auction without getting the rules anyway. And how would you get the rules? Just call the county, find out what their website is, and download the rules. They'll, they're happy to give them to you. They, they, they don't want to hide anything. The county wants to get rid of these properties. The county doesn't want property, I can tell you that. They want money. They want revenue. That's what they're there for. They're just after revenue. Yeah. Got another got another question here, and it's kind of related a little bit. Uh, does somebody, this is coming from Lexa, and her question is, can I participate in a tax auction online, or does it have to be in person? Oh, no. Um, you can you can do both. Uh, first of all, uh, when I started, uh, I used to have black hair, and I was very skinny, and that was a long time ago, right? When I started, you had to go to the auction. You had to be sitting there in the room or standing in the room, whichever was appropriate. And you had to bid and you had to make a lot of noise so they knew who you were and whatever. Now you can go almost all auctions are online and sometimes they're online and offline. So in other words, the auctioneer said, I have a bid in the room of 4,777. And I look over here at online, I have a bid of 5,000, 5,000, or 5,000 once. Okay, like that. So the auctioneer will be watching people online and he'll watch people offline. So I personally am an investor. So I buy properties in other states. I can sit here at my computer like I'm doing now talking to you and I can buy properties in almost all the other states. Now it's up to the county. Keep in mind there's 3000 plus counties. The counties are individual jurisdictions. That means they make their own rules. And so you have to know the rules for that auction, but every auction will have like this is an auction brochure. Okay, you can't see that because of the way we're, we're it's difficult to see because of the way we're recording today, but in the brochure, it will have auction rules. So let me open this one up and I'll just show you the back of it. So this happens to be Sullivan County, New York. And in the back of it, I'll try to hold that so the cameras will pick it up. It's difficult to pick up because we're using a green screen today. But if we were just if we didn't have the green screen, you'd be able to see it. So the back of the brochure would have that, but you can download this brochure. I downloaded and then I just put two staple staple, but I downloaded it. It's always all it's all online. So so you can you can you can sit on your rusty dusty right at your kitchen table and be buying properties. Yeah. Well, hey, you you just mentioned a lot of things online, Ted, and I know we've talked about this. You have a lot of great information of where to get information, and Kashif right. is asking, how do you find out what state sells what? Okay, um, you could go to the uh, the state legislature and they'll tell you that, but you don't have to even go that far. Just go to your local county, whatever your local county is, and ask for the treasurer. All right, now the treasurer controls all the auctions that are going to take. Now the treasurer is the most powerful person in the government, in my opinion. Why? Because they handle all the money. All right, so now the treasurer will tell you whether your county that you live in is going to sell tax liens or they're going to sell tax defaulted property. And that could work no matter where anybody was in the United States, they could call their local treasurer. Now, we actually teach people not only call the treasurer, we have we have lists where you can you can we can put you in touch with every single county in the United States and every single treasurer. And we not only have the phone numbers, but we have the the emails and all of that. We do that because we're in the business of teaching people how to do this. So you can sit in my office or your office once you learn how and buy in any state in the United States or any county. And they're all willing to sell to you because they are in the business of auctioning property. Anybody can attend the auction. You just have to have money when you're there. Don't show up if you don't have money unless you're going to keep your hands in your pocket. But a good idea to show up and do that. Just watch. Learn. You could learn a lot. That's well, hey, Ted, you know, you know speak, speaking of money, Tim has a really good question that I'm sure folks are wondering about. Can you lose money on a tax lien certificate? And if so, what should you watch out for? Okay, well, it's, um, it's something I said before. Um, uh, we're, we're doing a YouTube class today. This is not late night television. I'm not promoting anything. I'm just going to tell you tax lien buying and tax deed buying is a serious business. And you'll make serious money doing it if you learn how to do it. All right, so what are the mistakes you can make? All right, so here's how a tax lien works. You raise your hand at the auction. All right. We're raising our hand. 18%. Ted, we've, got, we've, 
Okay. Do we cut out or are we all right? Is the internet going in and out or what? I, I saw something orange come on the screen. We okay? we, you, were, you were frozen for a second, but it was fine because you were making the point that you raise your hand at an auction. So, you know what? Oh, look at that. I those raised people, my hand. Those, happened, those right? people know exactly. They, they know that step for sure right now. So, okay. after you raise your hand, then what do you do, Ted? Okay, when well, you raise your hand, let's say it was a $10,000 tax certificate. All right. So, the, so the auctioneer says $10,000 starting bid 18%. So I bid 18%. Is it going once, going twice, going? Nobody else bids. All right. Now, if I haven't looked to see what that $10,000 is, what if it was a difficult, bad property in the ghetto? So I bought the certificate, and then the people don't come in and pay. The whole idea of buying a tax certificate is you want the people to come in and pay, because not only when they pay it, they're going to pay you back, but they're going to pay 18%. Well, if you go to the bank, the bank's going to pay you maybe one or two percent. This guy's going to pay eighteen percent. That's a. I really like to have that eighteen percent. But if I bought a bad property, so people say, can I make a mistake? Yeah, you can make a real mistake if you bought a, a if you bought a ghetto property because the guy's never going to come in and and pay it off. So the government got paid, but you're not going to get paid. So you always want to look at the property before you would buy it. Now, no joking around, ladies, you would not marry the guy without looking at him. Well, it's the same thing when you're buying tax defaulted property or tax lien certificates. You don't want to buy anything. You haven't seen it. That's for sure. Well, and that's, I'll tell you, that's a, another, another great question coming off that, Ted. And this comes from Aaron. His question is, what is good due diligence prior to participating in a tax deed auction? Well, the more due diligence you do, the better. Uh, the more experience you get, the easier it is. Uh, for example, Let's just use the main thing. The main thing with a, doing your due diligence is number one is boots on the ground. Look at what you're going to buy. So let's say you want to buy a three bedroom, two bath house. It would be good if you drove your car, if they get out of the car and surveyed the property, looked at it and whatever. Now, in most cases you can't get in. And then while you're there, you've, you've now looked at it while you're there. Why don't you think about your exit strategy? For example, if the property was worth 100000 and the bidding started at 10000 would you bid all the way up to 90000 to get it? No, you would stop around 20 or 30% so that you bought low and now you could, you'd have margin between buying it at 20 or 30% margin all the way to what the value of it was. So you want to have margin and that's going to tell you how high you can bid. So you'd always want to look at the property and then you always want to develop a, an exit strategy. So most people, well, everybody, everybody's good at buying stuff. You can go to Macy's, you can go to Saks Fifth Avenue, you can go to the Kroger store, you can go anywhere you want to buy stuff. Just try selling it. Man, people are really sophisticated when it comes to buying. So if someone's going to buy your property, you better either be giving them a deal or you better have some great financing. But if you've got a rundown house and you're trying to get top dollar for it, not a good idea. So if you always look at the property, let's face it, if this property went to auction, it's probably used and abused. Now, some of them are junk, and some of them just need a little paint and clean up and they're ready to go. So you need to look at the, you need to look at what you're doing. It's not a, I mean, I think people are pretty cavalier about making money. At least they are on, on uh, YouTube and they are on uh, TV. But when it comes to real life, you got to buy something. Keep in mind, the whole game here isn't to buy, it's to sell. And you're not going to sell unless you know what you're doing. Well, you know, even beyond the, the building, uh, the actual physical structure, uh, Ted, there's a good question here from Kim. When you bid on a property, does it always include the land? Um, in the United States, most of the time, people are buying fee simple. So the, the developer already developed the land and and brought the electricity and the water and the sewer to the land, and then they built the house. So in most cases in the United States, now let's make some exceptions to big cities where they got tall buildings, where they figured out a long time ago, they can only depreciate the building, so they separate the building from the lot. Or, or you look at a McDonald's, and a McDonald's is a perfect example. One person owns the lot, someone else owns the building, someone else owns the franchise, because they developed it as a business. But in most cases, when you buy a property, it's going to be it's going to have the the land come with it, and it's very easy to check because who are you buying it from? If you're buying it a tax defaulted auction, 
you're not buying from Ted Thomas, you're buying from the county. If you're buying from the county, the property has a number, just like you have a social security number, the property has a number. So you can take that property number, put it in your computer in that county, have, the property will pop up and tell you everything you want to know about it. How easy is that? Yeah. It, it's real easy, but I'm sure there are some mistakes made in this business, Ted. And th this this oh. question comes from Lily. Oh, people make and this is, mistakes. This, it's unbelievable. Well, this, this, is a, this is a great question because you're going to have your opportunity to share she, her well, question. Today's is, mistake day, dude. These guys just wanted no mistakes. Okay, that's right. <laughs> well, well here's, here's Lily's question. It's perfect for you. You're primed. In all your years of experience, what is the most common mistake you wish people would stop making? The most common mistake. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can tell you the most common mistake. And if you go to an auction, you'll see it happen. All you have to do is go to one auction and you'll see people raising and bidding, they're yelling out their bid and getting a bid and they win the bid. And then they'll turn to their wife and they'll say, Gladys, let's go see what we bought. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. What? Let's go see what we bought. The guy spent the money. When you make your bid, don't think for a second that that county is going to let you out of that bid. You are going to pay that. And they got the power of the government to come after you. I'm telling you right now, you'll hear from the district attorney if you don't pay for that property. And so <laughs> you, when you buy a property at auction, this, serious, this is serious business. This is not the internet playing some games. It's the real world. So Gladys, let's go see what we spent the money. You'll hear that. I will guarantee you, you'll never go to an auction and not hear that. Wow. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's kind of stunning to hear, actually. But, you know, I... You, You've been out there, and I know you probably heard it. Oh, well, heard you know, it. in turn, in terms of what you're going to buy, and we have Kashif with another good question here. You know, what is a healthy budget to start buying tax lien certificates and tax deeds? What kind of what kind of money do you need to oh, get into this? Because well, I don't know who's watching, but you know, guy's got a million dollars. He's he's going to have a lot of fun. Guy got a hundred thousand, have a lot of fun. Uh, people that are attracted to this are people that are entrepreneurial. They're people that are you know, they're bootstrappers. They start out with a lot, not a lot of money. So you can buy properties in places like Michigan where they'll they'll have three bedroom, two, two bath houses or three bedroom, one baths, you know, uh, not the uh, not the best properties in the world that only have values of 50 and $100,000. You can buy some of those at auction at five and $10,000. I have clients doing that all the time. Now you're not gonna buy in the country club at those kind of prices. So everybody's got the vision that they're going to buy this beautiful place with pillars in the front and a curved driveway. And it's uh, where they filmed it, you know, Gone with the Wind. They think they're going to get that in 20 acres for five grand. That's not going to happen. Uh, you can go to whatever city you want and you'll find parts of the city that just have little bread and butter properties. And then they have more average properties in the two to 300,000. And then they have, you know, elegant properties. So it depends upon what you want to look at. Now, this some buyers that only want elegant properties because they know how to sell them. And there's other buyers that want to buy smaller properties because they have a, an idea of how they could sell them either by using low down payments or using installment sales and whatever. Now we teach all those things. It takes time to learn all that. But the point is the little guy can make a lot of money in this business. When I say a lot of money, you know, six figures for the year make twenty five and fifty thousand dollars on one deal on small deals and there's plenty of them there's going to be five thousand auctions this year so this the sum of everything so to give you just one you know this is the only answer well th there is no such thing and we could go to an auction in Cleveland and it'll be altogether different than an auction in Sarasota Florida and be altogether different than Plano Texas or something like that. they're all different. So you need to spend a lot. It's not something that you take your six gun out and start shooting. It, the, the, those people don't do well. This takes some analytics to think about what you're going to do. First of all, think about the buying and what your strategy is going to be. And then before you buy, what is your exit strategy? I happen to be in business. I'm not just flamboyantly buying properties for the heck of it. I'm in the business and what I teach is let's, Figure out what we're going to buy and what we're going to do with it. All right. Every auction will be different. There's 5,000 of them every year. So you go and see what is available at the auction and what would you do with that? You'd, you'd, you'd formulate those strategies before you started spending money. Anybody can spend money. If you want to do that, 
just go down to just go down to Macy's or wherever you want to go and go spend money. But if you want to buy tax defaulted property, you need to give it. Now, maybe I'm too conservative, but I'm going to tell you, you need to do some analytics and think about what that's all about. I'm not trying to scare you away and say you have to go to the Harvard Business School or MIT or Cornell or wherever. You don't have to go to, you know, engineering school in California to figure out pricing, but you've got to figure out are you buying at a bargain price and can you sell it relatively quickly? So I basically teach people buy it low and sell it low, make a quick profit. Now, nobody in real estate teaches that. Everybody teaches buy low, sell high. I don't do that. I say buy it low, sell it low, make a profit. That gets cash flow. And once you get cash flow, everything flows because everything's going to work. Now there's going to be another auction. So there's going to be 5,000 auctions. So I've got there's so much abundance of so many of these properties coming up that there's always another property. Here's what there isn't. There isn't people thinking about buying it at the right price and selling it at the right price. So you want to go through the analytics of whether you want to take training from us or take training from somebody that's done it. Now, you don't want to take you don't want your friends and relatives teaching you how to do this. Everybody will tell you how to do it. Your friends will tell you how to do it. Your enemies will tell you how to do it. Your relatives will tell you how to do it. Well, what do they know about? They don't know anything about tax liens and deeds. So you'd have to learn it, but you want to learn it from the perspective, I'm going to buy it low and then I'm going to sell it to make a profit. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a, a, a business that the government recognizes that you want to make a profit. So the government, they discount these properties 60, 70, 80%. They discount the property 60, 70, 80% when they sell it. Well, folks, if you can't make money in this 60, 70, 80% discount, whew, you're never going to make money. But you have to learn how to do it. It's not going to, I can't magically do one video and have a person getting rich. It's not going to happen. Just not going to happen. Well, I thought, I thought you could, Ted. So. Well, our show is done here today. No, we're not done here. Just kidding. Well, well hey, Ted, you know, on this. Some people just tuned out because they want to get rich quick. This is a business of abundance. Let me yeah. tell you how long this has been around. This has been around for 200 years. I've been doing the same exact business for more than 30 years. Think of all the Clevelands I've been to. Think of all the uh, counties outside of New York City. Think about all the times in Dallas and Houston. Think about going to Los Angeles. I've been to all those places. I've been in Seattle, Washington doing it. You know, I've been, why? Because there's auctions all over the United States and they're all lucrative for the person that knows how. You, you have no restrictions. You can buy, you can go to any one of 5,000 auctions a year. It's, there's so much abundance. It's, it's phenomenal. It's just absolutely well, Ted, phenomenal. You, Ted, you've got a lot of experience, again, just being all over working in different states and different types of properties too. And we have a yeah. question here from Tanya about the properties. Uh, she asked, is one type of property more profitable than others, you know, between mobile homes, single family homes, commercial properties? Sure. Sure. One type of property is always going to be uh, uh, the most popular. And that's going to be three bedroom, one and two bath homes, because that's where America wants to live in. OK, now, once I've said that, now let me give you some categories on both sides that will work very well. Okay, I am a conservative investor. So I actually have clients that come from Singapore, they come from Australia, they come from the United Kingdom, they come from provinces of Canada. And I teach them to buy residential, vacant residential buildable lots, a lot where there's houses on both sides of it, but nobody's built on this one. Why? Because I've gone to so many auctions. I can get on an auction list and go like this with the auction list. I won't have to, uh, on one of my desks today, but next time we do the class, I'll show you an auction list. So I have the auction list. I can go down the list and about 25% of all the properties on that list will be vacant land. Well, people don't know anything about land unless they live in Nebraska, they live in Colorado and places. So all the urban people, they don't even look at land. They're afraid of it. They don't know what to do with that land. So what do you think happens to the prices at auction? I'm giving you a hint with my hands. What do you think is happening to the price at auction? <laughs> They're coming down. I'm going to take a guess. It's They're coming down penny. like crazy, Ted. It's yeah. absolutely wow. pennies 
to buy these properties. So they buy the property. Well, that brought the price down, but that doesn't bring the tax assessment down. The tax assessor might say, this property in Riverside County is worth 200000 but you might have bought it for 20000 Now, wait, what did I say? A $200,000 property, bought it for 20000 that's 10 cents on the dollar. Huh. Where are you going to buy anything for 10 cents on the dollar? Now, how difficult is that going to be to sell? Folks, I got an appraised value, an assessed value of 200000 and I bought it for 10000 There's a lot of margin here. What do you want to bet I can sell it for 50 within days? Well, of course you can, because the assessed value is 50, uh, 100, uh, 200, I can sell it for 50. You get the point. So most investors would never go out and look at residential lots. Why? Because they were conceived in a house. They grew up in a house. They know everything about houses. So as soon as I come to bid at the house, they outbid me. And they keep, so what happens to the house bids? I'll give you a hint with my up. arms. <laughs> you get you get oh, a lot of exercise in. Yeah. You got it? I mean, oh my God. It only took me 30 years to learn that. It took 30 years. So I'm, so I'm really slow. So you get the point. Yeah. So there's all these little things happening at auctions. Now, if you go to big auctions, it's going to happen so fast. Now, if I'm snapping my fingers, you heard my fingers snap like that. That's how fast the auction properties. If you don't think that you haven't gone and looked at it, you don't buy the property and then go look and see if what, what you bought. You have a plan to write down maybe 20 properties you're interested in and hope you can get one of them. You don't go to the auction, you're the only one there. Now, if you go, if it's snowing that day, go to the auction, believe me, because you'll be the only one there. Take my word for it, go. I have clients that go. So they might be up there in Seattle, Washington. The snow's coming down like crazy, right? They go to the auction, they get their choice. Nobody else shows up. The room's empty. That's a great piece of advice. So you want to check out the property you want to buy, but then also check out the weather report for the day of the auction, huh? And if it's yeah, snowy, exactly, exactly. be, be sure to go there. People do. Yeah. Now, some people, they don't want to, they don't want to be at the auction uh, uh, too long. So they wait till the auction's going to end. So they might, the auction's going to be over at three in the afternoon. They'll show up at two 30, take whatever's left over. Then other yeah, people want to be yeah. there first thing in the morning because they are determined to get one property. So it's, it's okay. But the, the, the point is there's abundance. And if the, I have clients that I teach them bid up to 20 or 30 cents on the dollar and then stop. If it goes above that, let it go above that. Cause that person really wants the property. If you can't steal it, don't buy it. Because if you steal it, you can always sell it. In other words, if you buy it low, you can sell it low and it'll have a big appraisal on it. That's great. How you, good like a you strategy say, is that? It's worked for me for 30 years. Well, it's amazing. It's like you said, Ted, most people are like, no, 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 buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. That's it's it's, it's no, sort that's of an interesting all, no, strategy that's, you that's got. That's late night television. That's every broker yeah. in the world. It's that it's the it's the market we we're brought up in. But now the, the governments in all these counties have made made the, the whole business business world change because all the government wants, if the government takes a property in a foreclosure situation, that would be a bank. But when a local property is taken by the county, all they want is the revenue that was due them, which was the taxes. So if you don't pay your taxes, the government confiscates your property. What does the government want? The government wants the revenue. Why do they want the revenue? So they can pay the school teachers and the fire department and the police and the county employees. So all they want is that revenue. So what if they start the bidding at the revenue that was the taxes? So that's where tax auctions start. The starting bid is the back taxes. It's not some hypothetical number. It's the back taxes. So if it's a $100,000 property and it had $2,000 in taxes due, the bidding will start at 2000. I didn't say it would sell at 2000. I said it would start at 2000. Do you have a better chance there than you do outbidding starting at 100? Be nice if you could go get it for 10 or 20,000, wouldn't it? Yeah. Happens every day across America. I didn't make it up. I'm just I'm just a person that learned how to take honorable and ethical advantage of a system that the government created for us. I didn't create it. It's been around for 200 years. You got a lot of great experience. 
a lot of great experience yeah. in it, Ted. But yeah. we have another question, and this okay. is coming from Gracie. And Gracie's question is, what is the difference between tax deeds and redeemable tax deeds? Uh, a lot. A lot of difference. Okay. So a tax deed auction means that the government has confiscated the property. They now place the list. Anybody can buy on the list that wants to. You have to show up with money. Okay. The starting bid will be very close to the back taxes. And when the gavel comes down, so when the gavel comes down, you will then be the new owner of the property. You go up and you'll sign some papers. It'll take a few days and they'll send you a deed. So now you proved you own the property. All right. Now that was a tax deed auction. A huge difference between that and a redeemable deed. So now let's go to redeem. There's about five states that have redeemable deeds. All right. So redeemable deed is you go to the same auction. You raise your hand and you buy. Okay. When you go there, you're going to get a redeemable deed. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means whoever lost the property can come back for one year's time and redeem it. And what do they have to do to get it back? They have to give you back all the money you invested. In a place like Georgia, they have to give you a 20% return, a 20% return. In Texas, they have to give you a 25% return, and in some cases, all the way to a 50% return. Wow. I don't make the rules. I'm bringing you the message. Imagine making a 50% return. It's happening every day in all 200, not every day, every month in all 254 counties in the state of Texas. That's how they sell them. They're redeemable deeds. Ted, I have another question, and this comes from Cameron, who's in Canada, ah. and who want. This is from Cameron in Canada, who wants to know: Can I participate in these tax deed auctions from Canada? Absolutely, all the provinces of Canada, we welcome your money. So get on board. We'd love to have you. I have clients in uh, the majority of the Canadian provinces, uh, the western part of Canada. I have hundreds in British Columbia, hundreds in Alberta, many in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. But you can buy and you can do the whole thing online. I don't have time on a on a, a video like this. But uh, if you come to some of the other things that we do, you'll see that we actually show videos of people sitting in their basement office. A lot of people can't have basements because they it's nice and uh, nice and comfortable down. They have heating. It's extra room for them. So those people uh, from their basement using their computers are buying in Riverside, California. They're buying in in Dallas, Texas. They're buying here in Florida. Uh, and that can happen all the time from the provinces of Canada, can happen from the UK, actually can happen from anywhere they speak English, English speaking countries. So about four or five of those English speaking countries can buy here in the United States and buy tax liens and tax defaulted property. Yes, sir. OK, well, that then the, the opportunity is open for anybody who's looking to make a good profit in a business that you can teach them to make it in. So that's that's good. Got a question here from Candy. And this question is, is there a way to tell if a property is less likely to redeem their tax lien certificate? Are there any red flags? Okay, well, um, when you're buying tax liens, you're not getting property. When you're buying tax liens, you're getting pieces of paper. Okay, it gives you a piece of paper that is, is a right to earn money. It's not a property. All right, so if a property is in Florida and the tax bill always goes to Florida, but the people move to Michigan and they don't tell the tax collector, the tax collector is going to keep sending the bill to Florida. All right, so now the bill's coming to Florida. If you don't pay that bill, that property's going to tax lien certificate auction. So now I know that the, it's the person's living in Michigan, but the bill's going here. So these people aren't even getting the bill. So they got a good, there's a good chance that they're not going to come back in and redeem that. They don't get the bill. They're not going to because the bill's going right here to this house. But they moved to Michigan. So people move and don't tell anybody. And the tax lien, the treasurer, when they send out the bills, the tax collector, treasurer, when they send that out, they're going to they're gonna send it to the property unless they're told otherwise. So that's a, that's a good first indicator. Another good indicator would be uh, when people have a divorce, uh, who's paying the taxes? That's another one. Uh, we could go through, you know, many of those. Uh, there's, there's, there's all kinds of unique situations that happen to people. All right, some people go in the military, and um, they don't pay their taxes, whatever. So when when that happens, then there's a good chance that people are not going to pay their taxes. And if 
with a tax lien certificate, the reason people buy them is they earn generous amounts of money. But if the people don't come forward to pay the generous amount of money and redeem it, well, then you're going to get the property. That's why I said, always look at it, because what if the property, <laughs> what if the property's in the ghetto and you bought it? Believe me, the guy in the ghetto is not going to come in and pay you because he, he's not going to redeem it. You're going to end up with a ghetto property. Now, what are you going to do with it? That's not a good, that's not a good idea. Happens every okay, day. We got, people don't look. Happens. Yeah. It's another one of those mistakes that you see that happen out there, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Ted, we have time for one or two more questions here. And yeah. uh, Sally's got a good question. Is there a best state to invest in? Yeah, there's always a best state. It's the one you live in. Just do it where, where you live because you've got no expenses. You're just sitting at your computer or driving to an auction or something. Now, where do you get expenses involved is when you start moving around. But the opportunity is the United States. It's not just your community because, you know, a tax auction taking place now might not be the best one that ever took place in your county. But six months from now, when they have another one, that might be the best one that ever happened in the county. So I don't, I don't know. There's no way for me to tell. All I can do is get the list and then determine, is there good value here for me? All right. So it might be, for example, I bought a bunch of houses online in um, in some counties just outside of New York City, you know, places that uh, that uh, people could commute to the city, and they were colonial houses. Well, colonial houses, uh, a big house, and when they built them in, in New York, they didn't build them like rows and rows of houses in a in subdivision. These are setting on four and five acres with seventy five year old uh, oak trees and so on. Well, those kind of properties sometimes will be sold at auction for 30 and 40 cents on the dollar, not 10 cents, 30 or 40. But if, what if the house is worth 500,000 and you could get it for 30 cents on the dollar? Huh. That happened, that's happening every day. So, but you can see all this before you go because I can buy, for example, this, this is an auction brochure. This uh, county is Sullivan County. It's about a hundred miles from New York City. There are 235 properties available, 235. So I can open the brochure, there it is. I can see a picture of every one of those properties. Then I can go online, I can buy that property sitting here where I'm sitting right now. I can buy that property. Now, when I decide I'm gonna buy it, then I go over and I jump on a jet and I go and look at it. I don't buy the property unless my boots have been on the ground. Now you don't always have to have your boots, you might have someone you trust and they could go and take pictures of it and know what you're gonna buy. It's, it's kind of up to the person. But there's so much up. My, my point is, isn't that I'm so smart. My point is that there's opportunity everywhere. I've seen, I've had clients get properties in Los Angeles County for eight cents on the dollar. Wow. With no mortgage wow. and no deed of trust. Eight cents on the dollar. I've had clients that live in Costa Rica buy online and buy for six cents on the dollar in Los Angeles County. I've had clients that lived in Mexico City buy in Houston and spend 30 cents on the dollar. So it's it, the the opportunity is is here. Uh, the challenge is for people to learn how to do it. And everybody thinks that they're going to just snap their fingers. This is a business you have to learn about, but there's a ton of business there. There's a ton and it just take the person that can learn how to do research will get wealthy over a period of a couple of years. Well, Ted, you've been doing research. this. You don't want to yeah, guess. You, you say, I, you, yeah. You've been doing this 30 plus years and you've done it. All, you've been at a lot of different auctions in a lot of different states. Right. And we'll end with a question from Tim who, who asked, do all the auctions, do they all have the same procedures in the bidding method? method? No. No, the auctions are different. Um, um, some auctions are what we call, uh, like in Florida, on a tax lien auction, it's a reverse auction. It starts at 18 and goes down. Okay, but if Florida was selling property, which they have a second kind of auction, if they're selling property, then it's then it's highest bidder gets it. So there's two right there. All right, sometimes they rotate around the room when they do the bidding. Sometimes they take visualize this as a bunch of straws in my hand or something, 
Sometimes they pull straws out with a number on it. Sometimes they take a cowboy hat and they pull numbers out. Uh, if you ever went to a bingo thing and they get the balls in there, they got a big uh, a container. You know, they pull out number 35. Okay, number 35, this is your property if you want it. Oh, no, I don't want that one. Okay, roll it again. Number 75. Yes, I want it. And they, they bid. So it's it's up to the county to do that. Um, a few years ago, we were in, in, in Oklahoma, and they have like 75, no, maybe even more counties in Oklahoma. Each county had its own bidding process. So you had to learn for every single county. Every time we went to a different county, it was a different bidding process. So it's up to the county. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ted, you, you know, you, you've had a lot, answered a lot of questions here today, and I know everybody probably really appreciates it. Yeah. Okay. If somebody's watching this and is interested in learning more and getting into it, what should a newbie do? How should they start in this business? Well, the best thing to do is just do something that's easy that doesn't cost you a lot of money. Just go to tedthomas.com and, and start going through the things that are there. There's, there's videos, there's tells about different courses. Uh, we do everything. We, we've been uh, we've been at the same teaching thing for 30 years. So we have regular courses that they can do online. They can do it uh, just uh, uh, with, with uh, DVDs and things like that if they want, or they can come to actual events that we do. So we do events that they can they can attend and spend two or three days with us, or they can come once a month to a to a virtual event. So they could come to a virtual event uh, once a month. We do that, and they could spend six hours e while different coaches taught them about different parts of the event. So there's just so many ways to to learn. We try to make as many as we can. Now this time of year, we have a a, a real business of actually taking people to the auction. So we take them and hold hands with them and go to the auction. So we'll take wow. seven couples to an auction and uh, they'll prepare for a day and a half before they go to the auction. They'll go look at the property. They'll figure out what they want to spend at the auction. And then they go there and they individually move around the room individually. They don't bid as a group. They individually go and bid on the ones that they want, but they get educated. Then after the auction is over, then they all go and get together and say, oh, well, I learned this and I learned that. And I so we're a we're a complete company. We've been doing that for, for a number of years. We have coaches in uh, in uh, all different states, and we have some coaches in California. Some are actually in Canada. We have some here in the United States, and so we have constant classes every day. We have a facilitator. That's a guide, a facilitator, to to answer customers' questions and help them. We do that every day. We're probably the only company in the world that does that. But every day nice. there's someone to help people with tax liens and deeds. Now, do we get paid for that? Well, of course we get paid for it. The only thing we do free is, is the YouTube stuff, but uh, everything else we get paid for, but we're able to get people to be able to make $25,000, $50,000, which is our goal on the properties they buy. We don't want people to go out and try to make five or 10 grand. That's not our business. That's that's some kind of hobby. But if you want to learn how to make twenty-five dollars and $50,000, we can teach you how to do that. And the people that teach you are doing it. So our coaches are people, uh, as a matter of fact, I can probably say this and, and uh, it'll be correct. Our coaches as a group have probably bought more property than any other group of coaches. They brought over 200 properties purchased and resold. So that's, that's pretty magnificent. Now there are some people, I have people that uh, have been students of mine have done over a hundred deals over the past 10 years. Wow. So it's, that's it's a pretty lot. amazing. So. So this is, this hey, is not I, new to us. It's, uh, it's old stuff. So when you say you, you ask a question, most of the time we can give you a pretty good answer. If we don't have the answer, we can go look it up or tell you where to look it up. If you're getting the idea. Hey, Ted, I, Ted, I know you have an event coming up on Saturday, September 24th. I believe it's a full day just to give right. an introduction to the business. Right. That would be a perfect place. Thank you for uh, reminding me of that. That'd be a perfect place for a newcomer to get involved. So, uh, when we finish th this uh, uh, video, we'll put a place where you can go and register for that. All right. We don't do stuff free. We're not a free company. We'll do the YouTube videos free, but everything we do, we have a small charge for. So that costs $47.50, but it's all day. It starts at 11 in the Eastern zone and it goes all the way through to five o'clock. It does not stop. Uh, you have breaks. You eat your lunch while you're studying. You're uh, on the breaks. There's people doing questions. Uh, it takes about um, about 12 people to put on that event. It's a virtual event. You can sit anywhere you want to sit that you have a have Zoom and uh, 
will educate you for the whole day and it costs you $47. How can you miss? So, hey, if you're watching, you're definitely going to want to register for that and the information will be uh, be below. So, hey, Ted, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Really appreciate it. Again, this is this is Ted Thomas. He is the authority on tax lien certificates and tax auctions. And uh, you always learn something new from talking to him. Sign up, register, get an overview, and uh, learn a lot more about the business. Thanks for joining Thank you, us. Randy. And, Ted, thanks again for joining us. Take care now.